Well, I was a musician from the time I was a kid because my father was a musician and I grew up with it. And then when I went to university, there was no jazz band, so I joined a blues band. I didn't really like touring. I decided I couldn't do it anymore and quit the band. I didn't want to perform, but I wanted to write music. But I knew that the music I wanted to write was not necessarily commercial, so I needed another source of income. I decided to start dealing in what I'd been collecting, but I knew nothing about dealing. So I took stalls in Portobello Road and Bermondsey Market and just literally was selling on the street, which had some funny consequences because Irish or American teenagers, the band was still quite big. They would see me and they'd go, oh my God, it's him. And I'm, I'm dealing with little bits on my stall in Portobello Road. Although my mother told me as a kid I was collecting shells and stones like many kids do from the beach and whatever. So I was always a collector it seemed from a very young age. She was very English, it was very English taste. It wasn't my taste but I really appreciated it. I was very attracted to tribal cultures. I was always more interested in the craft of these cultures than the sculpture. In other words, I was less interested in the masks and the figures as I was to the textiles, furniture, jewelry, pottery. So I used to go to auctions, I visited a lot of museums, I went to other collectors' houses and slowly understood. But the more you see, the more it refines. And of course, the more you see it, the more it qualifies what you choose, what you like. Okay, I bought my first African flag in a minor tribal sale in London. And a man approached me and said that his grandfather or his great-grandfather had been a district officer in Ghana. That's where the flags come from. And he had brought back a collection of, I think, 46 flags. And would I be interested in seeing them with a view to buying them? And when I saw the collection, I realized that this was an incredible craft movement. The people that made them are the Fanti, people living on the coast, the Atlantic coast of Ghana. And the Fanti, who were always in danger of being overwhelmed by their northern neighbors, the Ashanti. They came to the British, well, primarily the British, for protection. But the Fanti, by allying themselves with the Europeans, picked up a lot of European military traditions, one of which, of course, was flags and banners. But they took the flag format and they turned it into a vehicle of communication, usually proverbial. Everything is told using proverbs. So they have to be extremely good artists to be able to make that message clear without using words. To me, they're stunning. I love exploring and I love traveling to different places that I've never been before. That is an adventure in itself. And certainly with the jewelry, which is occupying a lot of my time at the moment, that's a great motivation because obviously different cultures all over the world produce different things. They have different materials. My aesthetic probably changes all the time. I have so many times you think you've seen a lot of something and suddenly you see something that is you've never seen before in your life. Definitely my aesthetic from right from the beginning. Well, two things really. One is tribal and number two, simplicity. The jewelry I tend to design is basically not designed. So if a stone is beautiful, keep it very simple, very natural. It's very hard to know why you're attracted to something and not something else. Everybody's taste is just as valid as everybody else's. It's just their taste. So you can't say that's in good taste or that's in bad taste. All you can say is I like that and I don't like that. Why you like it or why you don't like it is a mystery. <laughs>